Hey guys, Professor here, P-R-O-F-E-S-S-O-A-R. Today, uh, we're going to be going over a stage that I like to do to polish up my tracks. Um, as you can see, I'm uploading some tracks today onto my Pond5 for sale. Um, now the point of this is not to advertise that, though, go check it out. Um, is to clean them up so they sound the best that they can, or, you know, relatively polished before you put them up for sale your beats or your tracks. Now, um, some people would call this mastering, and I guess this is a form of light mastering, but I just prefer to call this a polish, because, uh, you know, when you master, you're going into a lot more techniques. But this is just a quick polish you can do on any of your beats. Now, before you do this, you can render out your whole track if you like, or you can just do it in here. Um, I'm just going to do it in here. So what I'm going to do is for my polishing stage is use two different tools that come in FL Studios. And you can use this in any DAW. It doesn't have to be FL Studios. What we're going to use is a parametric EQ or an EQ, and we're going to use a multi-band compressor. All right. So first things first, make sure you don't have any limiters on your master track. All right. So I don't. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're not going over zero decibels right here. All right. And we're going to go to the loudest part of the song to check. Alright, so we're not breaking zero, that's good. But I kind of want to make a little more headroom before I polish this up. So what we're going to do is lower the volume of everything. As you can see, I control highlighted everything by dragging it across. All right, so now we have at least three to six decibels of headroom. I'm noticing in here that my sub bass might be a little too loud. Nah, it's just punchy. All right. So now what we're going to do is identify bad frequencies and lower them and boost good frequencies. So you get your EQ loaded up. All right, now let's play the song and listen for them. And I'll show you how we're going to do this, guys. And I have, a, I have a tutorial on using the EQ up as well. So if you guys want to know how I'm doing a lot of these, if it doesn't make sense, go check out the tutorial on uh, EQing. All right, guys, so I decided to make this EQ right here. Um, I'm sure I sped up the process of me editing this and looking for sounds, but kind of uh, what I did was I went hunting for some frequencies I didn't like. I found a few here and a few here. So all I did was I just lowered them a tad. I, I made up in the mid-range a little for it. And I boosted a little on the treble as well since this, um, the flow of this song is dic it's reggaeton. It's dictated a lot by those um, percussions. You're hearing that tick, 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 tick. a lot of the feeling um, and body is in that percussion. So I wanted to, you know, boost it just a tad. In fact, I'll probably do this so it's not as low. There we go. So our EQ is a fairly simple one. This song, you know, good mixing habits will make it so you don't have to worry about this as much later. So this stage right here, we got the EQ done.
Let's go listen, look at the meter again, make sure we didn't boost anything too high, so it's going over, so it goes over zero, especially not that, but I kind of want it in here for my next stage. And the reason I'm using this part of the song is because it seems to be the loudest part of the song, though... So we're looking good. The next step is this, though. Pull that back just a tad bit. There we go. Is our multiband compressor. Now, you can use a regular limiter if you want very easily, um, though every time you open up a FL Studios by default, you'll notice it has limiter. That's just to make your stuff sound better. But uh, what you're going to want to do is turn that off if you're making stuff from scratch. So now I'm going to pull up Maximus. And I have this after my parametric EQ. So always keep it after. Now what Maximus is, is a multiband compressor. So what we're going to do here first is find our ranges, our bases, our mids, and our highs. All right. So what we're going to do to do that is solo out these different things. All right. So let's go listen. All right, it looks like that's a fairly good um, identification. So now that we have all these soloed out, I'm just gonna show you what I do for my tracks. So I go into my monitor for each one, and I'm gonna start with my uh, with my low. Now uh, this is a visual, so you can see what's going on. Pretty much this is a ratio right here, which is one to one right now. So I'm not pushing up or pushing down anything um, as far as this goes. Now, if I was doing this, I would have a more full sound and it would be less punchy, I believe, because the lowers, anything in the lower volume would come up more to make up for being so low. And then it would not be as punchy up at the top. Whereas if you had something like this, anything that broke this volume level would suddenly be like, whoop! So that's just the first part. The second part is creating points on here. That's another big part of, of the um, process. But this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to explain what I do as I go into this. Or I'm just going to tell you guys after I finish. And the key right here, what we're doing, is actually to get the fullest sound out of this track. That way... If I have someone hunting on a computer speaker, they hear more of the track. If they're hearing on their headphones, they have more. They hear more of the track. Pretty much I just want the best sound that I can get before I put it up.
So, I did some comparisons, and I think this is a good EQ uh, and um, multiband compressor for this track. I feel it's ready to go out now. Um, so what I accomplished with this multiband compressor is actually, I noticed that the bass comes in so hard, and I like that, but it doesn't allow me a lot of uh, room in the mid areas of the track. So what you're going to notice I did here is that the sub bass, when playing, falls a lot right here, and it kicks, the kick comes up right here. I just wanted the sub bass to come out a little more after the kick drum fades off. So you're going to notice that if it goes lower, it's still a little gained right here. Um, also pre-gained it a lot, which you'll notice right here. Because I want these things to be almost hitting zero. And you're going to notice that I, these things barely hit zero, which is this decibel point right here. Because anything past that, you're going to be clipping, which you don't want. Clipping means that um, you're just putting out um, grody sounds, like uh, like. Um, it's hard to explain what clipping is, but you don't want to do it unless you're trying to do it. Um, so with my low end, I merged it. I uh, took the separation knob and I merged it. Um, I made this EQ. I want a little bit more full on the lower volume. This isn't the ranges of pitch. This is just volume. We already did pitch. And I brought that so they're a little more full. So anytime it's within this sound volume, it's being gained a little bit. Or is this, this is in and that's out. So whatever, when it's putting in 12, it's putting out whatever. Just know that this is a one-to-one -one ratio, and if you do this, it's lower than what you did. Oh shit, I think I fucked it up. Alright, that should be okay. Um, so that's what my low EQ looks like. And this is your pre-gain. Uh, so this is anything before it's run through this kind of stuff. This is your post-gain. So this will um, be after your uh, compressor. So for the mids, um, let's see what I did here. Okay, so I liked the mid, but it was being overpowered by the bass. So as you can see, I really boosted it while keeping it punchy like this, and then I leveled it off here. So anything below this level is going to be boosted, but it's also going to be punchier because of that curb. And right here, you see it kind of tips off. So I slow it down up here because I want it to keep like a full body around here mostly. And then for my highs, I, um, I made them really punchy down here. So... There's a lot of just clicking back here, which is cool. And what I want is actually what I want is that. So I have this coming in. Um right here, and you'll see that I'm boosting when it comes up above this point a little bit, because I want I want those sounds with that and those pings, but you're still able to hear that you also notice I separated it just a little bit in the mids I separated more, because I wanted it to sound full now, when it comes to the master track, this is what we're looking at this keeping it a little more full and only a few times does it even think about going above zero and when it does I have it so it kind of stops itself here but the parts that are gonna go over in fact what I'm probably gonna do is this instead is something like this so it rounds off near the top yeah 
I like that. It's still keeping a really pulsy kind of compression. Phew, phew, phew. Some people might not like that. I like that on this track. It's not heavy though. It's not being done heavily. In fact, it's a very minor um, difference. But I like how it sounds. So I'm keeping it full here. And I'm noticing that I want to just round it off at the top because I want the I want it when it hits zero to not be hard compressed down. I really want it to be a little softer beforehand. And then when it gets up here, I never want it to break that zero mark. So what I guess I did all in all today was this. We found bad frequencies with EQ. We b lowered them, boosted a few good ones to make up. And then we brought out a multiband compressor and we adjusted what we were doing with the different uh, sounds in the song to make the song sound more full. So remember first you identify your low, your mids, and your highs. Then you take them and make an EQ that sounds good for them. Most of the time this is just going to be, like if you don't want to get fancy, it's just going to be using this straight line and making sure it doesn't go above zero, but making sure it sounds fuller. Same for mid, low, and high. Just, just It's just going to be doing that. But if you know what you're doing, you can get a little more fancy and detailed, which I recommend using this on all your tracks to polish them up at the end because you'll get more proficient with it. Um, all right, so now... My song's literally gone from from this. To this. I also like how that looks on the graph because that leaves a lot of room for some vocals right here. And it leaves us some room to work in the bass down here too if we want to later. But uh, that's it guys. This is just the polishing stage that I do on a lot of my tracks. And I definitely recommend that you guys do them too because um, it's just good habit to do. It's just you're more likely to... I don't know, it just adds a professional touch to your work, guys. And just, it could be the difference between a sale and not a sale. Or, like, someone noticing something or hearing something. Um, but just kind of ear it out. Right now, if you don't know what you're doing when you're looking, really ear it out with your ears. Hopefully this wasn't too long. Fuck, 24 minutes, goddamn. Alright, guys. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, this was just a polishing stage. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a little bit in the EQ and the Maximus, so I hope that helped. Um, this was a little more of a boring one, but hey, still, thank you for checking it out. Uh, like it if it helped. Share, subscribe. It's up to you guys. I hit that bell bar. And check out the social medias, guys. We're almost at a thousand subscribers, so I'm going to be doing that sample pack soon. And I'm going to be releasing a few more goodies for you guys as well when that happens. Also, check out Pond5. Uh, a Spotify playlist, uh, our Apple Music playlist where we put our music up, um, and SoundCloud, YouTube, everything. Twitter, Instagram, stuff. Alright guys, this has been Professor, P-R-O-F-E-S-S-O-A-R. I hope you guys have a good day. Take it easy. Peace.